Hi everyone, this is Heather from WeddingsByHeather.com where my goal is to equip you with the best techniques and tips to make you a better and more efficient photographer. In this Q&A video, we are going to take a look at removing unwanted items inside of Photoshop, but first, make sure you check out my free workflow video series available on my website. In a previous video, we looked at the ability to take two photos and composite them into one, and that was a newborn session, and you can click below for the link. This is another photo from my friend Susie from Photography by Susie. You should definitely check out her website. She's an amazing photographer. So she sent me this photo and there is only one version of this photo and that is with the finger on the baby's head in order to balance it. So because we don't have another photo to composite from, we have to remove the finger. So what I did was I tried a variety of methods. I started with the content aware tool and that didn't work out so well. And then I tried the spot healing brush. Mm, that didn't work either. And then I played with the clone stamp and it did okay, but I kind of don't like the way that it, it messed the background up. So I wanted to show you my method for approaching a photo like this. Now remember, there are many ways to achieve the same results inside of Photoshop. We're simply using a different vehicle in order to get there. Let's begin by duplicating our background layer with a Command J or Control J on the keyboard. What I'd like to do is borrow from this side of the photo and simply place it over here and I'm going to show you how I do that fairly quickly. I'm going to go to the edit menu and choose transform and flip horizontal and when I do that I obviously just flipped the photo on the horizontal axis because the finger is on the other side and then what I'm going to do is drop the opacity of layer one just so I can see the background layer. I'm going to press V on my keyboard in order to access my move tool. And what I'm trying to do is line up the baby's head right here on this, on our right side, baby's left, right about there. looks pretty good. I'm going to bring that opacity back up to 100%. I'm going to add a layer mask. I want to fill that layer mask with black to conceal layer one. Remember when working with layer masks, white reveals, black conceals. I see that I have my white swatch selected. I'm going to press X on my keyboard in order to get black. And then I'm going to press G in order to get my paint bucket and just fill that with black. So I've just concealed layer one. That means I can't see it. Then I'm going to use my brush tool. That's B on the keyboard. I'm going to make sure I grab a white brush. So I'm going to press X to flip those swatches again. I'm going to check my tool options and make sure that my mode, opacity, and flow are all at normal and 100. I'm going to make this brush a little bit smaller with my left bracket key. And then I'm just going to brush out the finger. Essentially what I'm doing is revealing this portion of layer one. Let's zoom in as we get a little bit closer to the head. It's command or control plus on the keyboard space bar in order to access the pan tool. Make this brush a little bit smaller with your left bracket key. Just kind of brush this carefully along the edge of her hair. That looks pretty good. Let's zoom out with a command or control minus. Let's look at the before and after and I feel like that looks really good. There's one slight thing that bothers me because I am really detail oriented. I notice that there's this dark line from the light background to the darker portion of the background, just natural variation in light. So what I'm going to do in order to make that less obvious is I'm going to make my brush bigger, but I'm going to take my flow down pretty significantly, maybe around 30 or 40%. And then I'm just going to brush over that. And you'll notice that it just kind of blended it in. It might be hard to see on the screen, but it looks better than it did. It blended it in nicely. And if I hold down Alt or Option on my keyboard and click on my mask, I can see what that mask looks like. And the reason that flow worked is because it revealed it at a lower opacity. Wherever you see white on a layer mask, it will reveal the contents of that layer. If you see black, it will conceal it. But then there's also varying shades of gray which is what the flow accomplished for us. So let's go ahead and hold down Alt or Option on the keyboard and click that layer mask again in order to see it. Let's look at our overall before and after. I think that looks amazing. And to be quite honest, when I'm executing this technique and I'm not speaking, it takes me probably less than 30 seconds. So it's faster than you might think. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.